All right, all right, let's keep it going. And I just want to share with you part two of this series called Uphill Habits. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elliot, my wife Tiffany and I, great privilege to pastor this group of people called Lifeline Church. Man, I don't, I don't care if it's your first time here, your, your 300th time here, you've been coming here for 50 years. I'm telling you all right now the same thing I say every single week, and that's this. God has you here for a reason. I already had to tell a couple people face-to-face -face because they needed to hear it, but I'm telling all of you face-to-face -face right now. God has you here for a reason. You didn't come here by accident. You didn't come here because Google said this is the closest church to you. You didn't come here because your grandma dragged you by the ear to come here. No, 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 no. God has a message of hope, encouragement, and what? Love. You know what I'm going to say. Hope, encouragement, love. He wants to speak into your life today. And if you believe that with me, say amen. Come on. Amen. amen. Just activates our faith and says, yes, Lord, let it be done. Our mission around here is to be a lifeline by reaching people, uh, restoring people, and releasing people to be fully devoted followers of Jesus. And we, we plan on doing that in, in four ways. It's our vision for doing it. Help people know God find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. It's very simple, very straightforward, but this is our call into this community to reach un pe unreached people groups, man. Like, we're on the same page. We're all missionaries around here. Come on, being a lifeline is our mission. Before I jump into the message, actually, I have one more thing I wanted to share with you. Central Valley School of Ministry is going to be launching really soon. Two weeks from now, we've got a school of ministry that's going to be right here at this church. It's an opportunity to, to grow in your leadership, grow in ministry. And I just have a really quick video I'd like to show you on this. So my man in the back, would you go ahead and play that video for us? And so talk with any one of our leaders here. Pastor Amber is, is there to help you uh, get signed up for that. You can talk to me about it, or you can also download our church center app and register online there. So so, 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 without any further ado, I want to tell you that last week we started this series and we talked about one thing. We talked about putting God first. It's the very, very first habit that we need to, to have some, some uphill habits that are leading us to the hopes that we want to have. And, and next week, I got it up for you right here. Next week, uh, we, want to, we want to help keep our life aligned with that purpose with that purpose. That is the habit that we're going to be going for next week, so you don't really want to miss that. The most unhappy people I know are the ones that don't know their purpose and don't know that they're living on purpose. It's a miserable feeling, and so if you want to not live that way, if you want to know your purpose and chase after it, you definitely want to be here next week. You don't want to miss that at all. So I would love for you to turn to your notes. We're going to get going in this, uh, but I want to tell you, just I want to be vulnerable with you because I think this, this subject right here of habits it could sound like, man, I'm not doing very good. And I just want to let you know that, you know, I've got some, I've got uphill hopes too. Like at my house, my uphill hope is for a, a clean house, is for a tidy and clean house. But let me tell you a little bit about my, my habits, my habits. I've got an uphill hope of a clean house, but I've got habits of kicking my shoes off in the middle of the living room. You know what I'm talking about. I got habits of, 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 of leaving all my food and dirty dishes on the counter. It's like I, we all got hopes. We all hope the house will be clean, but do your habits lead there? And this is kind of the thesis. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've got, this is the thesis of the whole series all month long is this. This is in your notes. You can write this down. Most people have uphill hopes, but, but they got downhill habits. And I know that's, it's a little bit of all of us, really. I want to be vulnerable with you. It's, it's a little bit of all of us. So we all need a refresher in this topic. Hope is a great motivator. It's not a great strategy. I'll say that again. Hope is a great motivator. Like, I really, oh, I want that. That's a great place to start. But if you live your life hoping and not having any habits that lead to that hope, let me just tell you, you're going to live a disappointed life. You're going to be disappointed often. Oh, I'll remember to do that. Oh, uphill hopes, downhill habits. Listen to this in Romans 12. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. You want to know one of the reasons why we do 21 days of prayer and fasting is because it's building a habit. It's building a habit of, of setting ourselves aside, setting the worldly things aside, setting our flesh aside, and putting God first. Man, every, every week when we offer people Jesus, we don't just ask you to invite him into your heart. We ask you to put him at the top of your list. Man, cause it, and that is something that we learn to do on a regular, regular basis basis. It's an important thing. Listen to this point. Uh, I didn't put this in your notes, but this is real important. Key of life. 
What you starve will die. What you feed will thrive. What are you feeding in your life right now? And what needs to get starved? Habit number two. Are you ready for this? Habit number two is this. Write this in your notes and remember it always. Control my thoughts. Control my thoughts. This is so important. It's so crucial. Last week I told a story of when I finally put God first in my life after two years of knowing him. I knew him for two years. I got saved in a Salvation Army, got clean and sober, and it was great. But I didn't put him first. Like, according to the world standards, I was doing great. But I know what God first in my life looks like now. And I wasn't putting him first. It was finally when I started coming here. And people started saying things to me. They started prophesying over me. And that just means people speaking truth about me that had not yet come to pass. That's what that means. They're saying things like, you're a great leader and you're going to make a difference. Let me tell you, it did something to my thinking. It did something to my thinking. It changed the way I thought. Let me tell you, every pivotal moment of your life, you undergo a thought change. You undergo a thought change, a, a modification of your reasoning, a, a change in the way that you process things and think about things. Listen to Ecclesiastes 10. Wise thinking leads to right living. I can't believe the Bible talks like this. Stupid thinking <laughs> leads to wrong living. Man, we got to get our thoughts under control. Let me just tell you this way. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. You will never change your life until you change the way you think, how things are being processed up there. So I want to do it the way Paul did it when he was writing his letters. He would start theologically. He would start with the, with the premise, with the understanding, with the biblical understanding of how God works. Theology just means study of God. And so we want to study the way God does it. And then at the end of the message, I'm going to give you some practical things. Let's start with theological stuff. And this is the first one. You can write this in your notes. Everything begins with a thought. Everything begins with a thought. It, it gets created here. Then it manifests here. Then it manifests here. It, but it starts here. As we talked about last week, we must protect what we are letting into our minds first. Man, that's why I do my devotions in the morning. Man, because I know I'm going to have a better day if I start my day thinking about God. If I start my day uh, reading his word, if I start my day talking to him, if I start my day listening to worship music and filling my thoughts with the things of God, I know things are going to be better because everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. Romans 12 says this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. Man, did you ever even catch that before? It, how does he transform us into new people? He changes the way you think about things. He changes your thinking. He transforms you by transforming your thinking. If you want a different life, you need different thinking. Listen, we can be conditioned by our context just like that. We can think like slaves. Let me just tell you about the Israelites, God's first chosen people. They got released from Egypt and they were slaves there, but he had to do a second freedom and he had to get the Egypt out of them. He freed them from Egypt, but then he had to get the freedom out of there. That's why we want people to know God, number one, then we want them to find freedom. We got to get them out of Egypt first. Come on, somebody. Can't clean a fish before you catch it. We want people to know God, but then we want them to find freedom and then we want to get the Egypt, the slavery. We, you don't need to hide food anymore. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> He's got an abundant table for you. Can I get an amen on that? If you think like a slave, you're going to behave like, like a slave. Write this in your notes right here. What we think determines how we feel. What we think determines how we feel. What are you blaming your feelings on right now? The economy, your boss, your coworkers, your spouse, your family, your pastor. I hope that's not true. I hope you're not blaming your bad feelings on your pastor. <laughs> it, I didn't do it. Okay. I didn't do it. Society, what are you blaming your feelings on right now? Well, if it wasn't for blank, I'd feel a whole lot better about my life. What would you fill that blank in with? It might be something outside of you, but I'm telling you, your thoughts determine how you feel. It's your response to your conditions. That's why some people that have it way worse than us can be way happier than us because they've changed their thinking and they're happy with less. We can struggle with that. It's your response to those situations. Philippians 4 says this. Finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, if you need some peace, in, anybody need some peace in their life right now? Come on, somebody. I, I know that that's the biggest reason you probably even came to church today. 
I hope it wasn't out of routine and habit. I hope it was because, man, I need a word from God today. I need some peace in my life today. I need God to show up in 2020. Is there anybody here that would say, I need God to show up in my life? If you want peace, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to shut off some of this negative thinking that's coming your way. It's coming to you from Facebook. It's coming to you from Instagram. It's coming to you from CNN. It's coming to you from NBC. It's coming to you in the commercials in between football games. It's co negativity is coming in. We need to learn to block that stuff off. We need to learn to turn off the voice of the world and tune in to the voice of God. If you want peace, you got to shut that stuff off and think some godly things. Write this in your notes right here. Our thoughts determine our destiny. Our thoughts determine our destiny. I've explained it a little, but, but listen to this little anecdote. It's, it's very true. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sowing means planting a seed. Reaping means picking the fruit. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a lifestyle. Sow a lifestyle, reap a destiny. In that way, what you're thinking is, is taking you to your future. How you think about things. Listen to Romans 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about such things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. If your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. You are today where your thoughts have brought you. If you're discontent, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. And you will be tomorrow where your thoughts will take you. Change your thinking, change your destiny. I want to show you this. Because in, in our world right now, we, we've got a lot of input. I'll move this aside so everybody can see. Now listen, this right here, th this is actually my coffee drink. I'm giving up my coffee drink to illustrate something to you, so I hope y'all are happy, all right? I'm very protective of my coffee now, so you should feel privileged right now. Oh, this represents the social media, man. It's, it's just, I'm kind of harping on that right now, I know, but there's just something about it. You know, the, these companies, man, they're, they're, they're designing stuff that gets in your head to mess with you because that's what makes it addictive. And we're filling our minds with this stuff. This cup represents your mind, and this, what, what's in your thoughts is, is going to come out in real life. Look how thick that is. Man, I like it. I like it thick. That's how I like my coffee. And cold so I can drink it faster. That's how I like it. But, but oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I got to preach the rest of the time. I'm going to be on light speed right now. This is what I want to tell you to do because this is what a lot of our minds look like right here. Look at this. Look at how dark this is. When we're watching the news all day, every day, and, and letting that stuff kind of pour in, I mean, you understand what I'm saying, I hope that there is a lot of media out there. There are a lot of things fighting for your attention and they wanna fill your mind with black, dark negativity like this. There's a couple things we need to do. Number one, we need to empty out that stuff from our head. We need to, we need to turn that stuff off, find a way. Find a way to get less of that. And we, need to, we need to get that stuff out of there. But listen, Jesus doesn't want you empty. He doesn't want you empty. In fact, no, he, he wants you to fill your mind with the things of him. Look how clear, clean, crisp, pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is noble, whatever is praiseworthy. Think about such things and you're going you're gonna to have a more pure life if you fill your mind with the things of God. Are you seeing this? We, we, we've got to turn off the noise of our world because if we want to control our thoughts, man, step number one, man, we got to watch what's coming into our mind. We got to watch what we're letting in to our heart. If you want your life to be transformed, it happens from the inside out. It starts with your thinking. What are you filling your head with? That's the question. What are you filling your head with? I, I know a lot of people, they, they want to try and fix things from the outside in. Man, if I just fix my behavior. Man, if I just control my behavior. Man, if I could just stop doing that one thing. Man, maybe I'll feel. No, it starts from the inside. What are you filling your head with? Because that's what's leading to your actions. Let's get on the action plan here. Let's get from the, the theological and let's move to the practical. I want to talk to you about mastering this habit today. I'm going to show you in four ways how you can master this habit. Anybody interested in knowing how to control your thoughts? Come on. Man, come on, somebody. It's a tough subject. You can feel powerless over it. Your mind feels like it, you feel like it's in control sometimes. That's not the case. You're in control. There's two parts of your brain. There's the dumb part and the smart part. The, the, I'm, I'm just being real. There, there's the dumb part that um, remember that you need batteries for the flashlight when the power goes out. 
That's the wrong time to remember that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But the smart part of your brain is the one that goes, oh, I need to take that letter with me. Um, I know I'm going to forget it in the morning, so I'm going to put it right by the door. That's the smart part of your brain. I'm tell in this moment of clarity here today, you're at church. I'm telling you to, to do this number one thing. Create a plan to control your thoughts. Mastering this habit, step one, is create a plan. Let the smart part of your, part of your brain take over so that the dumb part, the part that just operates out of response, is controlled. Because you have a plan to control that stuff. No plan is a bad plan. Let me tell you right there. Oh, I'll remember to read my Bible. I'll remember to pray. Mm -hmm. Create a plan. Create a plan. Let what you really, let those uphill hopes, match those with some habits. Match those with a plan. Having a plan like I'll just digest any content that comes my way and I'll remember to pray and read my Bible and all that stuff. No, that's not what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10. He says, no, we take captive every thought. We, we are taking captive every thought and making it obedient to Christ. The way to capture our thoughts is to have a plan to control the content you are letting in to your mind. I got a story about this, how I, I did not do it. I hate stories like that. I'd rather have it all together, but I don't. One, one year, Tiffany went on a women's uh, retreat and she was gone for like two nights and I was like all alone. I'm like, you know, I think I'm gonna watch some Netflix. It's gonna be great. And I had no plan for like controlling the content in my life. This was many years ago. Many, many, many years ago. And I just turned on Netflix and like the, there was this new show that just came out and it was on the, the big title. It was called Breaking Bad. <laughs> and I'm like, I used to be a meth addict. This probably won't hurt me that much. I'll watch a whole season in like a night. <laughs> and I get up from the couch and I'm like, Ur, uh, like that changed my head. And since then, I know I can't, I don't watch that stuff. I don't, I don't watch stuff like that because I know what it does to me. I don't listen to music like that. I don't watch shows like that. If it's TVM, like even if it looks interesting, we just skip on by. I would encourage you to make a plan and just plan ahead of time. I'm not going to let stuff like that into my heart anymore. I'm not going to let stuff like that into my house anymore. This is, this is too important not, not to think about. This is important stuff. We take captive. We don't watch stuff like that because of what it does to our thoughts. Men, I want to speak directly to you for a minute. If you struggle in any way, in any way with that internet stuff, if you struggle in any way with pornography, with this phone stuff that it's like, it wasn't like this 30 years ago, everybody. Today, right now, that we have more access to stuff that we were never intended to see or think about. And it's right there. Can I encourage you? Make a plan to control your thoughts. Put some accountability on that thing. I got accountability on this. I got it on my phone. I got it on my computer because God has big plans for the Joneses. And I'm not trying to be like, well, I'm sure nothing will happen. Nope, I'm creating a plan. Can I encourage all of you men here today? There are a plethora of, of, of softwares and apps that you can download on your phone. I know I'm kind of get meddling in your business right now, but it's this important stuff. Some of you have thought in your heart, 2020 is my year. I'm not going to do this anymore. That's an uphill hope. It's a good one. Let's match that with some habits. Get some accountability. Get into one of our men's groups and, and let a man know, this is something I want to do with my life. Will you be on the other end of this software to keep me in check? Hey, you're not weak for doing that. You're strong. Men, you're not weak for doing that. You are strong for doing that. Come on, everybody, is this, is this what we need today? Is this what we need for 2020 is a new level of, of, of controlling our thoughts? Man, it's just too important not to do. Number two, mastering this habit, create a place to think my thoughts. Create a place to think your, your thoughts. Uh, at some point in your day, you have got to turn down the volume of the world and increase the volume of God's voice. Yes, I'm talking about having a daily conversation with God. Having a daily conversation with God. If you can talk, you can pray. You don't have to pray in the King James, and uh, the Bible wasn't written in England. I got news for some of you. It was not written in England. It was translated many, many times. God's not from England either. Your prayers don't need to rhyme. <laughs> they don't. They really don't. You don't, oh, holy Lord, I beseech thee. You don't have to do that. You don't, if you can talk, you can pray. 
It's like I got somebody coming up to me saying, oh, pastor, I'm just having a real hard time uh, praying. And, and then they just go on and on about why they can't. I'm like, sounds like you could talk just fine. Well, why don't you? that's how you can pray. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. There was a saying I heard once, and it always stuck with me. I hope it always sticks with you. I got it on the slide so you can see it, read it, hear it, all of this. It really changed me. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth. I'm not really sure. I just remember it always, and it goes like this. You never have to pray longer than 20 minutes, but you should never go 20 minutes without praying. That, I don't know. It always stuck with me that I don't have to have a big event. Now, don't get me wrong. Long events of praying are good. I come here every single week. I don't know if you know this about us, but we come here, we've been doing it for years, and we, for a solid hour, once a week, and we just pray it out, and we pray about everything, and we just are praying over you, we don't even know you, we're praying for you, we're praying over the chair that you're sitting in, we pray hard, but in, in a more real sense, all throughout our day, man, I, I could just stay in contact every 20 minutes or so, just, God, I, I'm, 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 can you help me out with this, can you help me out with that, create a plan what I do is I take three walks a day, one right when I wake up in the morning, one right after lunch, and one right after dinner, and I pray during each walk. It's a little healthy, but it's also a little healthy for me. That's just how I do it. I, I don't just leave it to chance. I actually made a plan over it, and I'm going to pray on purpose three times a day. That's what I'm going to do. Listen, Isaiah 26, you will be kept in perfect peace. All who tr you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. So think about it this way. If you've had a day where you're, you're just thinking about earthly things and not really heavenly things, you'll be probably be low on the peace meter. But Colossians 3.2 says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Create space in your life and your mind to be in contact with God every day. Number three, mastering this habit, is find a person to stretch your thoughts. Find a person to stretch your thoughts. Me personally, I got five people. I would say about myself, I do one thing really well. One. <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> the one thing I do really well is I've always had a ton of people in my life that I allow to challenge me. I got five pastors that are on rotation every Thursday, and I call them, and I tell them how my soul's doing. I tell them everything I'm struggling with. I'm telling them all the victories I had, and I allow them voice into my life. Five. You could actually make this find people to stretch my thoughts. Because listen to this in James 5, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If you want to live a healthy life, you need people in your life that, are, that are, have permission to talk to you like that. Who in your life right now has permission to tell you you're wrong? If there's nobody, well, you're wrong. <laughs> Whether you gave me permission or not. Life groups is how we do this here. That's why I'm so encouraged to see so many of you involved in our life groups. Let me just tell you something about our life groups. If you're not involved in one of our life groups, you are missing out on the best thing this church has to offer. This ain't it. What you're missing out on is the relationship. Because people get reached in rows, but they get discipled in circles. Man, we need to be with one another going into those deep truths. We need to be with each other, letting our, taking our mask off. And letting people know this is how I'm really doing. We, we all need that. Hebrews 10 says this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us not neglect our meeting together. Let us not neglect our life groups. <laughs> that was a paraphrase, okay? As some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I mean, have you noticed that the world is a little harder to live in these days? There's more negativity. There's more fighting. There's more bickering between political. It's just... It's just getting worse and worse all the time because the day of his return is drawing near. And that's a cool thing. I was just, I had the opportunity to do a funeral uh, yesterday. It was a celebration of life. Let me get it right. Because this person went to heaven. So it was a celebration. But it always reminds me, man, we're close. We're close. And I don't know if I'm going to be hit by a bus tomorrow. I, we don't know how close we really are. But that's a good thing. But we need to lean into each other in this time. Let me tell you about this last one, point number four. This is the last application for you, mastering this habit number four. Find a power to fuel your thoughts because we will never be able to get all that God has to offer to us until we figure out what God with us really means. God with us really means the Holy Spirit is with us every single day. The Holy Spirit is with you every single day. 
Listen to John 14, because Jesus was probably the, the best person to talk about this. He was the one that said, I'm going to leave. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you. The expression of, of, of God's presence with us is called the Holy Spirit. For those of you who don't know, the Holy Spirit's with you all the time. He's, he's with you, especially when we invite him into our heart and we live for him and we become overflowing with him. That's called the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But listen to John 14, what Jesus says right here. I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. How much truth? All truth. All truth. Be on the lookout. Later this year, we're going to do a whole series on the, the power and the presence and, and the practical of the Holy Spirit. It's so important. Be on the lookout for that. I can't tell you when because I don't know exactly. But be on the lookout because of this right here in Isaiah 55. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, God says, so my ways are higher than your ways. There, there's going to come a time in your life, if it hasn't already come, where you're going to need some higher wisdom. Where you're going to need some higher power than you have. That's the Holy Spirit. That's, that's God's Spirit with you on the daily. My, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Now, now I, know, I know something about you. I know that some people are adverse to the power of God like this because it's, it's freaked you out a bit. Let me just tell you this way. It, it's misuse in many churches has scared people away. I was with my brother-in-law. He's not, he not following Jesus or nothing, but he, he comes from a family. He's a great guy. I hope you're watching right now, my brother, because I love you. But he showed me a YouTube video of like weird, something weird. And he's like, is that what you guys do? I'm like, no, <gasps> I've never even seen that in my life. Weird people are weird people. You know, that's not God's spirit. It's misuse in some churches has scared people away and it's non-use in other churches has led to powerless life. And we don't want either one of those things for you. Look, we're spirit-filled people. I'm a spirit-filled man. Like, I pray in the spirit every day. When's the last time I freaked you out? That, that's not what this is. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to tell you is if you really want to create a habit of controlling your thoughts, you, you need a power that's greater than you to fuel you, to, to encourage you. He's the comforter. He's also the one who convicts. He's the one who, who steers us in the right direction. When we're asking God to direct our path, what we're really asking for is God's spirit to show us the way to go. The final, the final way to activate this habit of controlling your thoughts is creating a habit of allowing God's spirit to daily influence your life and your thinking. Just to, just to reiterate, I'll tell you about the story of how this happened to me because I was saved for a few years and in the Bible it talks multiple times about how people were believers but they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. It's, it's kind of normal. <laughs> It's, it's, it happens. It happened in Bible times. It happens now. So I was saved, and I wasn't taught about those things. And it was very, it was kind of like you would have never known. You would have never, never known. And it was the end of a service like this, and I came up, and I got prayer. And someone said, hey, hey, Elliot. Someone's talking to me. <laughs> someone said to me as they were praying right here, hey, Elliot, I, I want you to ask for the Holy Spirit. And he, he said to me, I want you to know that whatever you ask for, God's going to give you. And so I asked, I said, God, would you, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? And let me just tell you, no one, no one tried to push me down. No one surrounded me and they were sweating and doing that. If, some, if they did that, if you knew my background, I'll punch them in the face, you know, get away from me. You ain't doing that to me. Nobody did that. And nothing happened right then. Like, but I, I started to realize, I was like, what's this in my head? I, like, I started to hear like a different language up there. And I was like, what's that? And like several months later, I was actually with... Pastor Amber, we went somewhere to do, uh, I was on the worship team, I played drums, and I was at, the, I was in San Francisco, I think, and uh, we were playing a show, uh, 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 some event, I can't even remember, honestly, I don't, you tell me later, okay, but I was playing my drums, it was really loud, no one could hear me, but I just had this overwhelming urge to, to, to just open my mouth and pray, and my prayer language began to come out, and nobody could hear me, because it was kind of awkward, and like, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I told my worship leader afterwards, her name was Elaine. And I said, Elaine, I think I just, I think I just prayed in tongues. She's like, 
Elliot, you're on the path to like a really sensitive and, and powerful version of life. I was like, you know what I do now? Every morning, I'm super uh, tired in the morning. And every morning I start my day when I go on my first walk and, and, I, and I pray that way. And it's just an overflow out of my heart. I want to tell you this, this practice, this daily practice for me has changed my life. And it's connected me to God in a way that I just really can't explain. And I want to tell you that gift is available for everyone. Because if you can believe in God, if you can believe that God created the heavens and the earth and he created the, all the materials and the atoms and the molecules, it's not really a far stretch to, to believe that his power can be real. And that, that he can actually, on his will, heal people. On his will, give us wisdom that we wouldn't have had. Not just our own wisdom, but wisdom for others. Words of knowledge, things like this, without the Holy Spirit, we'll be missing out on an element of God that we would have never had before. And that's for all of us. And let me just tell you, some of you here today are, are ready to receive that gift. And, and with that gift, you're going to put God at the top of your list. I'm not saying that is like the, the, the marker or whatever. You're ready to put God at the top of your list. He's going to be number one in your life after in just a few minutes, I'm going to give you the opportunity, and you're going to make that choice today. But I want you to also, God, you're at the top of my list, but I want you to also invite God's Spirit to, to be in you, to overflow, to, so that, that people can see the goodness of God all over your life, so people can see the glory of God in your life, people can see the power of God in your life. Is that all right, everybody? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together. Father, I thank you for open hearts and open minds today. Lord, I ask that you would transform our thoughts, transform our thinking. Lord, we need you. We, we, we need you to change some things up in our life. And I just want to, God, I know, I just know that I know that so many of your sons and daughters are about to come home to you right now. And you're about to take first place in their life. And I'm so grateful for that. So with heads down, eyes closed, I want to just direct my my attention to two groups of people number one you've never really made God the top of your list you've never given him the opportunity to be first and to take first place in your life well I just want to tell you today's your day and this is what God has been waiting for this is what he's been drawing you to this place for and I want to speak to a different group of people that that maybe you used to have a really solid connection with him but something happened along the way your, your fire went out Things went dry. Maybe something terrible happened. I really don't know. But there's some of you here today that used to have a strong connection, a strong ministry, a strong, passionate, vibrant relationship with Jesus. And either you or someone or something happened, something changed to where that's not where you're at right now. You know you're not where you should be with God. And I want to tell you, your father has been waiting for this day. And as you come home, there is no guilt. There is no shame. The prodigal son came home thinking guilt and shame was going to come over him. The father instead came running to him. And I'm telling you today, he's going to come running to you. He is so happy that you're about to make this decision. So I just want to encourage you right now. If you're ready to make God the top of your list, I just want you to lift your hand right now and say, God, I'm making you first. Go ahead, do it right now. Amen. God sees you. Amen. God sees you. He sees you. He sees you. He sees you. And you. And you. And you and you, and you, and you. He sees you, and you. That's right. That's right. You can put your hands down. We're going to pray a prayer to put God at the top of our list. Come on, let's pray this prayer together. Everybody in the room, nobody praying alone today. Come on. Father God, I give you my life. You are first on my list. My top priority. When I fall short, you pick me up. When I fail, you are faithful. Forgive me of my sin. Show me the way to go. And fill me with your spirit to overflowing. Transform my life by transforming my mind. I give you everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody. Can we celebrate? Can we celebrate everything God is doing in this place? Hallelujah. Oh, man, I'm so grateful.